now we've loaded up a snare sample on this upper track here. And below that we again have our recorded output track. Let's quickly play the snare sound. Okay, and we also have a compressor down here and it didn't do anything at the moment because the threshold was back up at zero decibels, so no treatment. Even if the ratio was at two to one, we didn't compress anything. And now we want to take down the threshold to start working with our compressor and we're going to take a closer look at attack and release times over here. And these two knobs, whenever we are talking about them, we are talking in milliseconds. So now we have a little bit of compressed signal here, or quite a lot of compression already. And you see the overall level went down, especially for the tail of that snare, there's actually a little bit of transient still preserved and the tail has gotten a lot quieter. And we can actually make up for this gain loss with our output. Now what we see is this heavy spike here in the beginning, so we still have this transient in there and this is due to the fact that we have an attack time of 2 milliseconds. Now what does that mean? If we hover over the attack time, it tells us in the info view on the left, the attack time sets how long it takes to reach maximum compression once the signal exceeds the threshold. Now, our threshold is at minus 30. The signal of our incoming audio reaches the threshold immediately because it's louder than minus 30 decibels. It's quite loud here. So it now waits another two milliseconds until the compression fully kicks in. And this is how we are getting a little bit of a transient here in the beginning of our output audio. So in other words, if we go back into our compressor below and adjust our attack time to something like zero milliseconds or as close as possible to zero, we should get rid of those spikes. And this is exactly what happens here. So now we have a piece of audio that has a lot less dynamics. So in this case, we have a short attack and also quite a short release time. So what is the release time? The release time controls how quickly or slowly the level returns back to uncompressed or no compression after the signal falls back below the threshold. So basically that means whenever the input audio went down to a point where it was quiet enough to not exceed the threshold anymore, we are taking another 30 milliseconds until we completely stop compressing. We will return to the concept of release in a couple of seconds. So now in our example with a short attack time and still quite a short release time, we are mainly reducing the level of the transient here in the beginning of the waveform. And the second effect is we're emphasizing a bit more on the tail of the sound. If we listen back to the audio. Now, since we've removed the transient, like this part, it's, it's a bit more evened out. It appears to be more focusing on the swooshy end part of the snare. So it kind of emphasizes on this tail, but actually it only does appear to be doing that because the transient in the beginning is tamed or attenuated. Now the second option we want to try out is take a fairly slow attack time and a fairly long release time.
I'm increasing our ratio a little bit as well here. And I'm increasing the output signal. And let's A, B it to hear the difference. So what happens when you have a short attack and a slower release, the overall level will be reduced and the peaks are relatively quieter compared to the tail parts. So um, it doesn't look that steep anymore here. It looks a little bit flatter here. As mentioned, the peaks are relatively quieter compared to the tail parts. So let's go in there and increase the attack time. So in order to increase the attack time, I'm taking down the output level a little bit or else it will be getting a bit too loud. Because as you see, what happens if we increase the uh, attack time and we remain at a quite fairly long release time with such a threshold, we are getting those transients back in. And what happens is we're reducing the level of the sustain with our compression. Everything after the 7th, 8th millisecond something is heavily being reduced, taking down the tail of that snare drum. By that, we also emphasize on the transient of the snare. So if we AB this quickly, you notice how the transient starts to show up and sometimes that's maybe useful if you have like transients that you want to have cutting through your mix and this is a possible technique to use. So before we are applying this knowledge about compressors on a more practical example let's quickly sum up what we just did. We learned with a fast attack and a fast release, we are reducing the level of the transient or the initial spike you see at the beginning of the waveform. In the second example, we had a fast attack and a slow release and the overall level of the snare was reduced. In the third example, the one I just showed you, we had a slow attack, so we had a couple of milliseconds of attack before actually kicking in the full compression and we had a slow release, so a longer release time, something about 200 milliseconds. And we reduced the level of the sustain at the tail of the snare drum. And by that we sort of emphasized on the transient. Now here's a little overview of important controls on our compressor and the values we can dial in. For example, we talked about ratio before, we are getting light signal reduction with a ratio of 2 to 1, moderate reduction with 4 to 1 and more or less heavier reduction with everything that's higher than 8 or 10 or 20, 50 or infinity is very heavy reduction. Actually we said infinity to 1 is working like a limiter. With the attack, we saw that we can use short attack times if we want to catch transients. If we want our transients to cut through, we are using longer attack times, something around 10 maybe, to give our transients 10 milliseconds of time to cut through. And with our release, we were playing around with values around 50 to 60 milliseconds in the beginning, and then we increased it up to something like 200 milliseconds, but this is highly dependent on the input audio source you're using. If you're using higher frequent audio, it's better to use shorter release times. And if we go down into our bass frequencies, we're using longer release times. And that's due to the fact that lower frequencies have longer waveforms. Hi. My name is Francois and together with my friend Tom, I'm running a channel and website called Production Music Live. 
Sometimes I'm lying, I'm just lying, I'm still lying here with you. Have you ever had trouble finishing your tracks because you got stuck while trying to achieve a great sounding mix? Today we are going to mix this song from start to finish. And if I lose myself, what if I lose myself to you? We will enter the different mixing stages, we will go into detail on state-of-the-art mixing techniques and we will learn about the theoretical concepts and secrets to achieving professionally sounding results. So let's get started.